Cuban former champion, your Dennis Ugas, says he don't know what the F happened, but the version of Errol Spence that showed up versus Terrence Crawford was not the same version of Errol Spence that fought and beat him when they fought the previous year. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I got to address the elephant in the room. So in a recent interview, your Dennis Ugas, former champion who beat Manny Pacquiao. Um, I want to accept my promoter, I believe, uh, my, my fight with Ricky Hatton. Do, 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 do. He beat Pacquiao, arguably beat Sean Porter. I thought he beat Sean Porter, to be honest. Close fight, but he lost to Errol Spence. He says, and I quote, I don't know what the f happened. I mean, that wasn't the Spence that fought with me. He seemed like a completely different person. He says, I think the rematch will be a more competitive fight if I think it's at 154, right? So let me address the elephant in the room. There's a lot of people who have been saying the same thing. It truly seemed like something was wrong with Errol Spence. Now, credit to his team, because whatever that thing was, they're keeping it tight lipped. They don't want to be known for making excuses and they're not going out there. They signed up for what they signed up for. The outcome is what it is. And they're letting that ride. And I know for a fact something I, I don't know what it was for a fact, but I truly believe that there is something that they have that they could easily you dropped a bomb on me, baby. They can easily drop the bomb and maybe it'll come out at some point. But everybody's saying the same thing. Now, I know the Bud Buddies, they tend to get emotional when I say certain things on the channel, but I can only be me. Same OG. I can only be me, the same OG, and tell you and call this beautiful sport of boxing how I see it. And that's the reality that I seen. Something was up with Errol Spence. Some people, oh, you're making excuses or whatever. But at the end of the day, if a fighter looks devastating like Errol Spence has looked throughout his career and he gets to the biggest, most important rivalry and suddenly looks different. I mean, Errol Spence, you know what he looked like? He looked like Space Jam. <laughs> Remember the scene where the nerd Lux, they stole all the powers and talents and all the skills from the NBA players. And then Patrick Ewing, you see the like the spirit going to him. He's like, <laughs> and he tries to shake it off. And they're like, what's up, Pat? You good, baby? And then all of a sudden he couldn't dribble. He couldn't catch the ball. He couldn't shoot. Like all everything was out the window. That's how the fight looked. And you some of them want me to act like nothing happened and act like that was just all Crawford like it just that's not what I seen bro and the funny thing is two things can be true yes Crawford is a top talent he's a great fighter elite fighter I've always said that however it also was a bad night in the office for Errol Spence and it looked like something was up and we've seen that. Like, I mean, even in the Chris Eubank uh, fight, Eubank Jr. versus Liam Smith. Yeah, credit to Chris Eubank. He turned everything around, but it was very similar. It looked nothing like the first fight. And Liam Smith, they said he was rolling his ankles. And the, the same is, is probably for the same reason. Because post fight, Liam Smith said he had some kind of back. Man, I got a gat like that long to your back, dog, to your back gone. He said he had a backyotomy or something, and he couldn't train like he wanted to, whatever he said. And the, the long story short is Liam Smith said he had to drop 42 pounds in order to make the weight. And it doesn't take away from Chris Eubank was focused, recruited Bo Mack and got a brand new trainer. And did what he was supposed to do two things can be true but i'm not gonna act like liam smith looked like the same liam smith it looked like he got old overnight 
and for Errol Spence is probably for the same reason, which was the weight. Errol Spence, a prideful guy, he thought he could do it. He thought he could keep coming off of long layoffs and, you know, maybe the car wreck made him feel bulletproof or invincible. These aren't Crawford's problems. It's not his fault if Errol Spence miscalculated. However, you have your Dennis Ugas and several fans and they're like, man, that just wasn't Errol Spence. And I keep saying the same thing. I've seen stylistic mismatches and usually mismatches play out after time, like over time within given a couple rounds or whatever. If you think, I mean, just think of it like this. How many fights do you truly in your heart of all hearts think is going to be Hagler Hearns, a 50-50 style fight, and then it looks like that? I mean, outside of Floyd Mayweather, but Mayweather made everybody look bad. You dig? But and really a lot of the floyd fights people thought they were 50 50 because of they wanted to see floyd lose in the fanfare but they really weren't 50 50 fights based on floyd's ability to adjust his ring iq and his his savvy and agility and chin and things like that and his ability to counter and just he's so overall well-rounded so i can't even really say floyd people wanted fights to be 50 50 like ricky hatton yeah, he had like a chance, a puncher's chance, but he wasn't really a 50-50 fight, but he had a lot of fans that believed he could win. You know what I mean? This fight with Spence and Crawford was a fight that people truly in their heart of all hearts believed was 50-50 and could go either way. And then what we got was a one-sided zombie version of Errol Spence. And it seems very similar to the fight with Liam Smith, as I mentioned, with the weight. You know, you can call it excuses or whatever you want, but he turned to the Space Jam NBA players with the nerd lux. You know what I mean? And it is what it is. We'll see. He put himself in a definite harder position by losing in that fashion. So Crawford will have the edge psychologically, physically in the rematch. Let me know how I did in this video. Subscribe to the channel. I am the best in the business and I'm out. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.